Hello, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Present Podcast. My name is Daniel Morgan, and I'm here joined live by Pujix from Toronto, Canada. Hey there, my man, how's it going? Live is awesome. Fantastic, glad to be here. And guess what, guys? We have two new guests on board. You probably have seen them on my stories on Instagram. And guess what? The happy couple, the heart sign, the cool stuff about achieving your goals and shooting for your basically uh, dreams and stars. Well, guess what? They're here. Their names are Olga and Ilya. Hi, Olga. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Wow. It's wonderful to have both of you on board. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Go ahead, Olga. First of all, they say ladies first, so we'd like to start with the ladies. So right now, Olga, first of all, because uh, obviously there's a huge difference between a podcast and uh, basically a 30-second story on Instagram. So why don't you right now go ahead and tell our listeners more about yourself? Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank you, Daniel, for inviting us. Uh, it is really a pleasure, a pleasure for us. And uh, it's our first experience in participating in podcast. So okay, if um, uh, what I would like to tell about myself is that I'm uh, a musician. Uh, that is my uh, major dream to become a professional musician and to uh, give concerts on big stage and also I'm an interpreter uh, and uh, I really adore learning new languages and uh, currently I work with English and Turkish and I'm l- also learning Italian uh, but I'm a beginner <laughs> that's amazing actually so that is practically everything. Fantastic. So we have a polyglot on board. She speaks English. As you can see right now, English is one of the languages that she works in. But as you can see right now, she's quite fluent. Of course, she also speaks Turkish professionally uh, as part of her work. And now on her way to, obviously, learn Italian and Russian. That's her uh, mother tongue, basically. Now let's move on to Ilya. Ilya, why don't you go ahead right now and tell us about yourself? Yeah, uh, hi again uh, for everyone. I'm Elia. I'm 25 years old. Uh, I'm quality assurance engineer for now. I um, started uh, starting to work. So um, uh, I'm living in Moscow and Oh, you didn't boast about the company you're working oh for. Oh my gosh, you're <laughs> just making me like intrigued. What what is the company? <laughs> Yeah, the company is Yandex, and actually, we can say that it is a... Searching... Uh, of course, uh, it's a Russian uh, Google, if you will. Uh, for those of us who don't yeah, have any experience Google. about Russia, Russian Yandex is this giant, uh, you know, tech company in uh, Russia that almost owns everything. So it's not just like the Google, like, they are basically the, the one company that uh, run all the show when it comes to IT and technology. So they have everything from Yandex Food to Yandex Taxi to Yandex Search Engine to yeah, Yandex weather yeah, right. if basically it's the russian version of all things uh basically in, internet of all things and that's quite wonderful so Ilya, you just got this job but before that you told us that you were a bartender for a while and you had to you know uh, deal with a lot of guests and a lot of people tourists from around the world so first of all i'm very happy that you got the job and uh, we we're very excited so how do you feel about transitioning from that you know cool bar job where you just have to pass on the drink and just to take the orders to joining this uh, large tech company uh yeah that's true uh, i'm uh, still working at four seasons uh, as a bartender in moskovsky bar the center of the moscow and center of the russia and i love this job uh and uh, uh, of course, yeah, I'm working a lot of uh, a lot uh, with uh, guests uh, from other countries, and it's a very very good experience for me. Uh, it most of um, uh, really good uh, good experience. Uh. Mm-hmm. So the thing is that uh, he can combine these two jobs, so he doesn't need to uh, to do only the programming job or mm-hmm. only the bartender job because actually I think also. The word of bar- bartender can be considered as art mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, uh, we shouldn't also underestimate this job because they are like, you know, alchemics. Wow. <laughs> they, are like ke- uh, they are like chemists who mix all that, um, I don't know, liquids and they create something new. Some, For example, uh, recently Ilya has won um, a competition at work and uh, he, invent- uh, he invented a new cocktail. And <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. First of all, Ilya, what is the name of that uh, cocktail you invented? Uh, it's uh, it called uh, Whiskey Collins. Interesting. Uh, 
Yeah, it's a very interesting because it's a little bit sweet and it it can be a, a dress for someone and for someone, no. <laughs> so Interesting. Uh, very well. Yeah. So if I take that cocktail uh, on a date, is that going to help me get some good results or what? <laughs> of course, yes. That's wonderful. I'm coming to your bar, man. I'm coming to your bar and I'm going to bring some guests along the way. So uh, with that being said, of course, uh, you, you already have done this. Now, uh, we heard about Elia and of course, we already discussed uh, Olga, the fact that she's a polyglot, an interpreter, as well as a musician. Uh, nobody perhaps here that you're listening right now, you probably uh, don't even know much about Russia, let alone the Russian show business. But I actually happened to watch one of Olga's, uh, uh, I think a couple of them actually, uh, music tracks, and they were quite wonderful. So before we get started, with the show uh, because I believe that that's part of your dream because today we're going to actually talk about uh, you know how to achieve your dream. Let's talk briefly about uh, basically how you guys actually managed to discover that dream because I really believe that if you want to live a happy life, you need to actually know what your dreams are because not having a dream, it just makes life seem so dull and uninspiring and it just makes no sense at all. So uh, b b before we go any further, I would actually like to start off I'm going to move on here to Pujex and ask him uh, basically what he thinks about the importance of goal setting and having a dream for your life. So Pujex, right now, uh, you obviously, I don't know for a long time, and I know that you are a dreamer yourself, but tell us first about your uh, uh, approach towards the concept of uh, having a dream and setting a dream for yourself, trying to achieve and shoot for the stars. What is your personal take on that? Yeah, thank you for the question. It's an awesome question. Uh, you know, I think uh, in life, if you're like, th there's one thing that you put day to day goals or week to week goals or year to year goals, etc. There's a, a whole other game that when you're a dreamer, meaning you're trying to achieve something in your life or a set of things. And that's a whole different ball game. And I think everybody needs that. Everybody needs to um, be able to wake up in the morning and be excited about, you know, going after it and get uh, getting things done in order to basically uh, try to achieve the things that is very important and dear to them in their lives, and that could be uh, that could be anything. And um, and I think if if people don't have that question answered, that is the first question they should think about before anything else. To be honest with you, if you if, and and if you have um, a dissatisfaction with your life, you probably haven't figured out that question well. Because if you do. It doesn't matter how difficult things get. It doesn't matter how upset you get about something. You just want to get after it. You just want because you know that's the sacrifice that it takes for you to achieve the thing that you say you dream about. And again, if it is in fact quote unquote your dream, nothing will stop you, no matter what. You just keep going. So true, man. So true. We have to have that dream to actually push us out of our comfort zone and towards greatness. So uh, now I'm going to move on uh, to Olga here. Olga, you yourself mentioned that one of your dreams is to actually become a musician, uh, hopefully a star at some point. Uh, first of all, uh, tell us about the importance of having a dream. Before we talk about your dream, actually, in uh, particular, why is it important, do you think? Uh, I mean, let's say you're talking to the young ladies out there. Why do you think it's important to actually have a dream? Mm -hmm. uh, it's important to have a dream because, um, uh, you know, the more you do, the more energy you have usually. So basically a dream helps you to move on and it helps you to wake up in the morning and to know that the day just won't be wa wasted in vain. And also I wanted to uh, say a few words about how you can um, how you can get to know your dream. I think it all comes from childhood because usually parents are the people who uh, help you with that. Because, for example, uh, uh, my parents uh, in my childhood they paid a lot of uh, attention to my um, uh, to development of some uh, artistic skills and they tried to find out what were my uh, particular. Um, uh, ambitions or <laughs> what were my strengths. Wow. So actually, I visited a lot of types of uh, different, um, I, I don't know, um, different uh, sex, like uh, different um, um, uh, places where I could develop some some particular skills, like figure skating, the courses of figure skating, or the courses of painting, or uh, I had a, a private tutor of vocal. Uh, so actually, I think it's the, uh, for the child, uh, it's uh, the responsibility of parents to help him um, discover his uh, dreams. Because if you start uh, achieving your goals, not achieving your goal, it's not a good thing for, I think, for children to, um, I don't know, to 
not to enjoy their childhood, but to be very concentrated about the future and about the goals. But still, uh, childhood is the time uh, when you uh, when you still have an ability to dream and you don't know that uh, life may be hard and it's very, it's very difficult to achieve your dreams. So when you're a child, you're very open to everyone to and to everything and uh, you can um, understand what you like easily, but only with the help of the parents because uh, they will provide uh, the child with such an opportunity. Interesting. Very well. So, so you had the, uh, the, the privilege of having good parents who at a young age, at an early age, actually trying to help you discover your true talents. And may I ask you at which age you finally said, yes, this is for me. I want to be a singer. Uh, well, when I started uh, having uh, lessons with my um, vocal tutor, uh, I actually realized that I would like to become a professional singer. It was at the age of 11, I think. Wow. 11, you see that? Childhood is a huge, huge element when it comes to discovering our uh, true calling. Because I remember if you look at right now, if I look at my childhood, I realized around the same age, I kind of figured out that, yes, I'm, I'm all about everything international. I just want to see other cultures and languages. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think when you go back to your childhood, you will always find the answer. That's wonderful. Let me move on now mm -hmm. to Ilya here. So, Ilya, first of all, uh, tell us uh, basically to, to all the young um, gentlemen out there, why do you think it's important to do have a dream? Why do we, especially we men, need to have this strong sense of purpose and ambition to aim towards? Why is that important, do you think? Because uh, to have a dream is a perpetual motion uh, in life. I mean, uh, Whatever you do, you always uh, need to have a dream, uh, to have a goal and to have, um, I don't know, uh, to... Intention. 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 You see, they're intention. so close. They're so close, right? And they can actually read their minds. I heard from one of my friends that if you have been <laughs> dating for more than a year, you can literally finish each other's sentences. One question, Olga and Ilya. Can you right now finish each other's sentences or is it still too early for that? Oh, can we finish each other's sentences? That's right. Like when Ilya oh, starts, you kind of know what he's about to say. You know, uh, when we do it, when you, when you ask us to do this on purpose, uh, I think it would be impossible, right? Because it's like the sentence like, oh, t tell me a joke. And we're All like, right. Like, like, you know, make me laugh. <laughs> your head there like. Tr, tr, tr. That's right. You're going to remember the jokes. So I think in the process, probably we will do that. So That's I wonderful. Will, Fantastic. That sentence. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> so back to Ilya here. So you were saying it's important to have the dream, basically. Now, Ilya, what is your dream? Now we know what is uh, Olga's dream. What is your dream, Ilya? Uh, yeah, I remember we talked about uh, uh, it. And uh, I guess I can tell you uh, to find yourself. And after that, to be yourself. And mm -hmm. th th uh, that is my dream. Interesting. To, to find, find yourself and be yourself. That's a great point. So we've already talked about the importance of having a dream. And I want to add to what you guys mentioned right now, and that is the importance of what we call the state of flow. You see, uh, we humans by nature are teleological creatures. What does that mean? If you want to f find out more about this, there's a great book uh, in this regard called uh, basically uh, The Teleological Brain that talks about how we can actually achieve our goals. Another great book is called uh, Psycho-Cybernetics. In that book, the authors talk about why it is important for the human as a species to have something to go towards. Why is that? Because our brains are evolving away throughout long, long years of evolution, unfortunately, to err on the side of being negative. Because throughout our past evolution, it was always more beneficial for us to remain somehow pessimistic and afraid and on the edge because that would have allowed us to survive back in the old days when we were living in Sahara Desert. But now things have changed a lot and we no longer have to constantly worry about being eaten by uh, saber-toothed tigers or having to worry about finding the next meal. And unfortunately, despite living in the modern world with all its benefits, we are still possessing that brain that by nature and default is pessimistic, worried, afraid, and lazy. And because of this, we somehow forget why it's important to have a dream. And the answer is very simple. Having a dream allows you to aim towards something that you want 
instead of being distracted by all the things that are not right about life. And guess what? They are the majority of the things, right? Most things around you don't really go well as you plan. So most things in, in life somehow tend to be on the negative side. And if you don't have that dream, then it's so much easier to get lost with all the, oh my gosh, well, I got to pay my bill. Look at the weather. The weather is so cloudy today. Oh my goodness, the stocks are coming down. So it gets so much easier to get distracted by all the things that are not right about life. But once you have a dream, all of that is just like a noise. It just disappears. And you realize that, yes, it doesn't matter. Let's focus on what truly matters. And that's the dream. So because of this, once we have that dream, life becomes like a mission. Now you're on a mission. So when you wake up, it's not like, so what am I going to do today? You already know what's up and you already know what you're going to go for. And that gives you that sense of focus and flow and juice for life and for vitality. So having a dream is important, no doubt about it. But guess what? Some of us maybe not know how to actually set that dream. Earlier, Olga mentioned that she had to, you know, basically go through a lot of courses to realize her true talent. But let me first move on here to Pujix. So Pujix, you right now, you have already discovered your dream, but a lot of our listeners right now don't know where to start. Like, well, good for you four guys who've already found your dreams. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. So Pujix, what are you going to tell those listeners of ours who perhaps have not had the you know privilege of having parents like Olga's or having that sense of clarity like Ilya? What do you think they can do to discover their dream? Yeah, that, I say that's a fair question. Okay, yeah, so so what I can say is that first of all, you mentioned like you discovered your dream. It's although it's true, it's always evolving. It doesn't mean that I'm like today I want to be a soccer player, tomorrow I want to be a tennis player, but it means that it's becoming more specific or it's it's deviating from a path towards another or what uh, or what have you. But so it's not it's not fixed in stone. Like there's a general premise to it, but it's always uh, evolving. So and that uh, in my opinion that should be because you're always evolving. We're getting better, so we 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 have a better understanding of how things are, uh, how we are, etc. So. But uh, taking a step back towards uh, the question you ask is how, how you want to find your dreams. It's, it's actually, it's both very hard and super simple. Um, very hard in that it can be time, it can take time and be frustrating at times if you're not uh, reaching any good um, visual or, or, or sense of what you want to do. But it's also very simple in, in a sense that, well, if, if, if something, something, if, if you're not feeling excited, you haven't found it and you got to keep searching. How do you keep searching? One of the, one of the good things is just do, do stuff, experience stuff. Interesting. Uh, if, if you want to, if, if you feel like you, you want to go and learn archery, go learn archery. And after a couple of sessions, if you want to drop out, drop out. That's fine. But I'm, I'm, and I'm not trying to say be flaky. That's, that's not, that's beside the point. My point is that you want to experience stuff to know whether if, a certain thing is your thing or not and and then you keep exploring what sort of things are actually the high note for you well mm -hmm. i guess olga can tell it better uh, 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 right. on this analogy but my point is that it, it actually sounds good play it by the ear if you will wow see what what works that's 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 how i did it what a great point. And I uh, couldn't agree more in this regard. Ultimately, the ones who have discovered their passion and talent are the ones who've tried so many different things because you simply, I've told this, I was actually talking to one of my friends, Alex, the other day, and he was saying, man, so I think all the time about what I should do in my life. And I'm really confused. And I said, Alex, you're thinking too much, dude. You're going to have to stop thinking and start taking action. Try a couple of those ideas. See which one's actually going to you know, suit you more. And I uh, couldn't agree more with you, Pooja, in this regard, that we actually need to try a lot of things. Now, let's move on to Olga here, and I'm going to ask her about what she thinks regarding uh, what we can do to discover our talents and our true dreams. So what do you tell all of our, uh, basically, uh, listeners out there? What can they do to discover their dream and talent? Uh, I actually have two practical pieces of advice for those who haven't found their dreams yet. Um, so the first advice would be to uh, try to understand your strength. And maybe for that, sometimes you cannot see from inside, right? Mm -hmm. you, you sometimes don't see your strength. Um, so uh, you can ask some of your friends to tell uh, you about yourself, right? So you can just ask, guys, can you tell me what am I good at? So they will tell you, for example, you are very, uh, you are very easygoing, and you can support a person uh, who, for example, suffers, um, some suffers from some 
I don't know, from some um, problems mm -hmm. uh, in his life, in his or her life. Uh, so it means that you can be a good, um, I don't know, psychologist. Interesting. Or, uh, for example, um, if uh, uh, your friend tells you uh, that you are good with animals, like you, I've, al I've always noticed that you like cats, that you, wow. you can be, for example, I don't know, a vet. So it's uh, essential to uh, gather as more information about yourself as possible. So probably you can um, pass some of the psychological tests. Uh, there are a lot of tests. I think it's called DISC. Interesting. The test that allows to... Uh, it, it allows you to understand what type of person you are, if you are a leader or if you are a person who um, maintains, like who makes everything work. Right? Interesting. Right? In I also heard of Briggs-Myers test. Uh, what do you think about that, Olga? Uh, I heard of Briggs-Myers test. You heard about it? No, no. Well, that's a similar thing, know. but I heard it's a, li a little bit more uh, accurate than the other possible personality tests because, mm -hmm. quite frankly, when it comes to the whole personality test, I'm just usually a little bit on the skeptical side because I'm not sure exactly can categorize people mm -hmm. in certain things. But what I do know about Briggs-Myers test, which is it allows you to uh, find out which one of the 16 types you are in terms of you're introverted or extroverted, mm -hmm. you're more intuitive, basically you're thinking, you're more judging, and those kind of things. But ultimately, you're right. What you're recommending here yeah is for people to actually take some personality tests to know who they really are. Maybe they really are not uh, suited for a career yeah. in public eye. I advise them to collect as much information about themselves as possible. Maybe uh, via tests or via talking with the friends or via introspection or I don't know. Uh, it, there may be a lot of options. Mm -hmm. And also I have another advice. So I heard such a such an advice from I, I, I don't remember uh, the name of the psychologist, uh, but uh, she told uh, she, she said that um, usually people cannot follow their dreams because they are too fixed on money matters. So they are afraid of uh, being poor and uh, they're afraid. Like I don't know about the Western world, about the USA or the Canada, about the type of um, uh, upbringing that you usually had, <laughs> but usually uh, our parents that were raised in Soviet Union, they think that these uh, artistic professions or some new professions like, like a PR agent, they are very useless and they usually tell their children that if you are an uh, artist, you will be poor. <laughs> and so mm. some of the uh, really talented uh, people, they are really afraid to follow their dreams just because they think they have these old beliefs that you can be uh, you can earn a lot of money only if you are an accountant or if you are uh, an economist or a businessman. But actually, nowadays, you don't have these limitations, right? You can make money just, I don't know, selling uh, some, uh, I don't know, knitting um, uh, crop tops <laughs> of by course. Instagram. Exactly, because now things have been democratized for everybody. And you're yeah. saying right about the U.S. and Canada. I'm not sure if uh, U.S. and Canada spare much better in this regard because that's a global tendency. And I'm not just talking about the U.S. or Canada. Mm -hmm. Almost any country that I've had the fortune of working in, they tend to somehow – it's quite normal for most parents to prefer certain professions over the others. And I think the reason is very mm -hmm. simple. I mean you can't really blame the parents here. So I'm not going to hear – say, oh, it's all because of the parents. Because let's be honest, the chance of you – Having a very good income working in certain prestigious fields like medicine or law or business generally tends to be much higher than those who want to, for example, become a millionaire or a multimillionaire as a singer or a dancer or a pop star. Because we're talking simply about uh, fields where only the very top and the very best make seriously ridiculous amount of money and uh, fame and uh, success, wh wh whereas the majority are simply unknown. So. I heard like a statistics like probably you will never hear the songs produced by 99% of all the basically musicians in the world because there are so many of them. And I actually checked this uh, to f see if it's true or not in different countries. And I realized it doesn't matter what country you're going for because I usually one of my hobbies to improve my different language in different countries is to actually listen to their music. And I realized that this doesn't matter if it's the U.S. or, it's, uh, for example, Russia or it's Germany or it's Italy. It doesn't really matter. In the end, when it comes to cer certain fields that are very creative in nature, like being, a, let's say, a singer, being, let's say, an artist – the, the problem with those fields is that only the very best are uh, killing it 
at the basic cost of the other players. It's kind of like a zero-sum game where the winner takes all. And you really cannot blame your parents for saying that you should not yeah. be an artist because they kind of know that if you are not going to be the best, then you will have a much higher chance of just simply getting a normal job. But then again, I'm not in favor of that approach to parenting whatsoever. I really believe that children should be able to follow the dream and they should learn from it because that's the best way to, you know, learn and grow yourself, right? So you actually go out there and say, all right, daddy, I'm going to prove to you that I'm going to be one of the best singers or the best, I don't know, tattoo artist or the best painist or whatever out there. And I'm going to prove it to you. And guess what? Go ahead. Be my guest. Go try your best and come back after 10 years. If you really could achieve that, then voila, you just got it. And if not, of course, now you can go back and get a job. I really do not like it when parents make decisions for their children. It's just really ridiculous. I I, I totally get your point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, I'm not blaming them. Um, they had different realities. And uh, yeah, sometimes they may be true. But what I'm saying is just sometimes uh, you need to... Um, to think about what you're really passionate about and what does your soul want and uh, for just a short period of time you need to forget about the money you will think about them later you won't have any other option rather not to think about about them so you think about them in any time in any ways uh so if you want to understand uh, like your dream usually doesn't come from your brain uh, from your brains it usually comes from your soul wow. and uh, mm, usually in our modern society we are used to listening to our logical right, right to our logical statements not to our souls right so interesting uh, but the dream comes from your soul not from your brains wow so that's well, my i should just make a uh, make a point here about basically uh the, the whole notion of soul if by soul and uh brain you're referring to the emotional side and the logical side i'm totally with you but when it comes to the whole notion of soul and that it, there is this entity out there a lot of our listeners on the btv podcast tend to be on the more skeptical and scientific side than on mm -hmm. the spiritual side but still i get your point and i really agree with you because uh we uh, basically in uh, the field of psychology, we say the conscious and the subconscious, uh, the logical and the emotional. And you're definitely yeah, right. Yeah. I really agree with the fact that trying to find your dream is kind of like what you said earlier, like don't just make me laugh or just tell a joke, right? You really got to look deep inside. And this is not going to just come out immediately or by just your logical thinking. You have to dig very deep under the uh, basically hood to find out what it really is. And I totally agree with you because the conscious brain and the logical brain can never say, well, I was born and I think based upon my estimations, it's best to get this job because it has the most superior chances of me surviving, thriving and ha passing on my genes to the next generation and having healthy offsprings. This is just never going to happen. We feel certain things, some intuitive, you know, intuitive, uh, basically pulses and uh, inclinations that will allow us to pursue certain careers. And I couldn't agree more because that's exactly what uh, one of my favorite authors, Robert Greene, said. He says, every one of us is endowed with a gift since birth. And the moment we discover that gift, it's our job to develop that talent and to grow it. Because uh, if we say no to that call of nature, if you will, you, you call it the call of soul. I'm going to call it the call of nature, uh, not that call of nature, by the way. And uh, uh, whenever you feel it in that regard, you somehow realize what it is that you want to do with your life. And that's it. Like you get the point, And from then on, you're focused, you're in, and you know that this is it. I got to focus on this one, and hopefully you're going to go forward in that regard. So that's a great point. Let me now move on to Ilya about what he thinks is the important elements regarding finding your dream and passion in life. Uh, okay, I will try. <laughs> okay, I believe that um, uh, everybody uh, has own mission in, uh, in this life. And... Uh, one moment uh, they find uh, their dreams. Uh, it can be when they get all older, maybe in youngest uh, time. But uh, always, uh, everybody find uh, uh, their dreams for. Uh, uh, I don't know. In one moment, maybe. That's right. It, it depends of situation. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what the, uh, what they need to do it i think uh, uh, to work hard and to believe uh, what they do and um, um i don't know uh, i get your so far you mentioned two critical factors working hard 
and having the belief. And I really believe that, uh, we, as uh, basically Olga mentioned earlier, yes, something inside of you whispers in your ears and says, this is it. You are made for this. Let's go. Let's do it. But at the same time, if you, uh, as you mentioned, if you don't have that belief to follow up with it, then that whisper will be ignored and you will never truly realize your dreams or potential. So having that courage saying that this is what I feel right now and I should do it only then you have the chance to actually go for it. And the other point you mentioned, uh, Ili, was about hard work. Couldn't agree more because as uh, Pooja just mentioned, you really got to try a lot of things and that's not always easy. Guys, if you're listening to us right now, it isn't easy to find your dream. It involves trying many things, putting a lot of effort. Like, it's kind of like, you know, finding your ideal mate. If you look at people who are truly happy right now in their relationships, they tell you that it took them a lot of trials to finally say like, this is it. I want my wife or husband to be exactly like this. This is what I like to see in a person, right? And that requires a lot of experimentations and trials and, you know, and errors. And ultimately the same thing applies to your dream and having that faith as well as, you know, the hard work that you put into this whole uh, pursuit until you actually find your dream. And I couldn't agree more. This is so true in that regard. So, all right. So far, we've talked about finding that dream. Now let's actually talk about the hard work. Now let's be honest. Once you discover your dream, your job is not done. As a matter of fact, you haven't even started because turning that dream into a reality, now that's the real deal. That's the real mission. So let me go on here to Pujix and let me start with him. So Pujix, all right. Let's say that our listeners use the techniques that we offered here to discover their dreams. Now it's time to realize that dream and ambition. So what do you think could be done in this case? How could these uh, basically men and women out there who have already discovered their talents, they say, well, I'm good at this and this and this, and I'm very good at this and this and this. How could they now actually go ahead and you know do something? Because obviously there's a lot of ways to know your dreams. And uh, I want to add to what you guys mentioned, a few more points to know what your dreams are. And those two things that I often ask everybody is, number one, imagine that tomorrow you want $500 million in lottery. Now, don't tell me I'm going to spend all of that basically and just start traveling the world or I'm going to buy a lot of exotic cars and stuff because that's what everybody says. Apart from that, imagine tomorrow you want $500 million cash tax-free in lottery and then you're going to spend that on all the cool shit you want to buy and then you travel the world for five years straight. But at some point you want to do something for this, you know, to make yourself feel fulfilled, right? What kind of job would you do when you know that financially you're safe? That's number one. And number two, what type of people you are persistently envious of? I mean, everybody gets envious of the status of, let's say, a, an artist or a singer or a dancer or a wealthy person. But for example, I personally want to look at, let's say, singers. I don't think that I will envy singers as much as Olga does, right? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that when Olga looks at a famous superstar, she feels a certain sense of envy that I could never possibly imagine. Maybe one of my friends will look at Cristiano Ronaldo and says, man, I just want his life. But I could never, ever want to be a, you know, uh, let's say a soccer player, ever, no matter how much the benefits are, right? So ask yourself right now, who are the people that you are consistently, because everybody could be envious of anybody for a while, but who are the people that you are consistently envious of? Do you say like, oh man, I wish I had that life. Man, that would have been awesome, right? Because once you answer these two questions, what kind of job would I pursue if I didn't need to basically make money? And number two, what kind of people I'm truly envious of on a consistent basis? You would really understand what you truly want because in that case, you are now answering that basically inner voice that is telling you, I want this. And trust me, we are not all envious of the same people. I am pretty sure Pujix, uh, for those of us who are just listening right now, is a physicist. And so I'm pretty sure he definitely has certain degrees of envy towards certain uh, Nobel laureates or certain basically uh, minds that have changed the world, including Albert Einstein. The point is, I would probably not have the same inclinations. I mean, if I look at the Nobel Prize winners, I'm not going to say like, oh, sure, I sure as hell I would want to be there. Well, I would admire them, but I probably don't want to be there, right? But I'm pretty sure that when it comes to Pujix, he definitely admires certain people that I simply don't and vice versa. There are some people, some people that I admire and envy that I'm pretty sure that Pujix says, well, I don't, I mean, that's cool, but that's probably not for me, right? So who are those people you're envious of the most on a consistent basis? And more importantly, would you do their job 
if you did not need the money? Once you ask these two questions from yourself, once you find the answer, you kind of know what that dream is. But then, hmm, congratulations, you just started the journey. So let's go right back here to Pujix and ask him, all right, I know who I'm envious of. I think of that, you know, motherfucker every single day and I just get really pissed off and I just want to get that life. But guess what? How can I realize it? What are your advices for our listeners, Pujix, who would like to turn their dream into a reality? Yeah, well, that's uh, that's a very fair question, man. Um, and <laughs> thank you. Like, I'm uh, I'm actually not that envious. Like, as much as I admire Nobel laureates such as Albert Einstein, I'm not that that envious of them. For the first reason, I don't see myself in that league. They're like in a whole different. I'm 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 playing street soccer. They're playing Premier League. So it's a different <laughs> game. So well, that's I'm not that's really that humble game. of you, man. But that's true. I get it. <laughs> But um, anyways, but point point being, yeah, you, you just said it like that. I think uh, it's super simple, and uh, that is, um, you know, you just you just start it, and that's the exciting part. It's the hard part too. Yeah, it's just the beginning, but it's also very exciting because now you're like so presumably you're passionate about the thing that you want to do. And again, it could be a set of things, it could be abstract, it could be whatever. It's your dream, whatever it is. Now, now, now is it is a time for a hustle, and it's the time. That you, you, you will meet obstacles. Well, the first thing is that, yeah, you will not succeed in one night or two nights. Um, there are going to be a bunch of failures and that's when you know you're in the right path because, um, if you've never failed, you've never done anything. Um, uh, you've, you've just never lived. I think there's a saying like that. I'm not sure, but I've heard of it from somebody, but I don't know who, who is the originator of this thing. Anyways, so. So yeah, you can make all the plans. You can become particular about it. Ah, I want to achieve this uh, in, in the next year, and then that, and that's great. You should do it. But the most important thing I think that um, uh, I would I would want to say, and because I personally experienced it, and I think it's damaging if you get too much into theoretical, uh, saying okay, this should be done, that should be done in the next year or whatever. Uh, if you get too much into particular, uh, you might get in your in, in your own way of doing stuff and. Uh, I just want to say, just do it, like Nike would say, wow. right? Just, just do it, um, and and then you you know how to modify the plans along the way. It, it'll be great. Fantastic, very good. Now I'm going to move on to Olga here. So Olga, all right, I know my dream. You know your dream. So what is the first step? How do we actually take the steps necessary to turn that dream into a reality? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think many people do not start um, fulfilling their dreams because they just see how much work uh, has to be done. So my advice is to write a plan uh, which consists of both um, long-lasting plans, like for, for example, the plan for a year, and the short plans, like for every day you have to make a really short step. And when uh, some time passes by, you will see that these small steps really lead you to something greater. So you, every day you should do something, at least something, uh, sm some small actions. And you can divide your uh, big goal uh, into small goals. For example, if we're talking about being a singer, I will give you That's my right. example. That's right. So being a singer can be separated into five categories. For example, um, uh, your image, so working on your image, working on your content, content uh, meaning the songs. Uh, the third one is uh, working on the package, like, I mean, the package of the product. That's right. Uh, so it includes different, uh, I don't know, um, uh, photos, photo shoots, different, uh, I don't know, stories on your Instagram or uh, covers for your albums. Uh, also, it includes, I don't know, some other steps. So you can divide your goal into some small steps mm -hmm. and take uh, small actions every day. Interesting. And, uh, Very good. Continue. Yeah, and, and to um, to be uh, and to accept the failures that, yeah, that's wow. the, I think that's the most difficult thing to accept that Absolutely. Uh, something, at least some, uh, at least uh, once you will have to experience this, um, this, <laughs> tragic experience I, i'm not sure if it's going to be only once olga but that's the reality because <laughs> unfortunately we think that the path from your dream to your base i mean from where you are until to actually realize that dream is just a simple all right so i'm gonna do this so olga said all right i'm gonna find my dream I'm going to follow it. I'm going to take action. Boom. I'm a superstar. Yeah. Well, that 
doesn't really work in reality. In reality, it's more like you first try something and boom, you just lost your money. Oh shit, oh my gosh, I want so much for my image. And then you try to shoot another video and boom, doesn't even have you know good quality. So the point is this, failure, I always say this, we all fail our way to success. Let me repeat that sentence. We all fail our way to success. It, it means that we are not going to succeed by merely trying once or twice. A lot of us, the bigger our ambitions and dreams and goals, the more we have to tolerate failure, step backs, because they're a part of our basically success in life. I mean, I use this example all the time. When a, an airplane takes off in San Francisco to land in New York City, they are off course the majority of the time. And they're always adjusting their course until they finally land in JFK. And the same thing applies to life. You are now, let's say you're in the San Francisco of life. <laughs> Nothing against the wonderful people of San Francisco. Uh, you are in the San Francisco of life and you want to go to New York. That's your dream. That's your target. All right. In that case, you simply cannot be right on course all the time because there's going to be steps in front of you. Maybe there's going to be serious problems with the clouds. I'm not a pilot. Uh, maybe there's going to be some serious turbulence on the way. So you've got to constantly get the feedback, change your behavior so you can safely land in JFK. And the exact same thing applies to life. Yes, I am here. That's the goal. So I should start making video clips and, or I should start making phone calls or I should start running a, let's say, blog on the internet or whatever it is to finally achieve. But guess what? Things aren't going to be that easy. There will be so many unforeseen problems ahead that if you knew them, you'd probably quit your dream right now and go back to getting a simple job, right? But that's part of achieving your dream. If it was easy, we wouldn't call it a dream. We would call it a, you know, a boring task. I mean, you do like dream about waking up tomorrow to have breakfast? Well, unless you live in Ethiopia and in a very, very basically uh, uh, poor country, that is not a dream because it's just going to happen. So we call it dreams because they are difficult, because they are tough, and because there has to be a lot of failures along the way. And if you are not willing to fail, learn from those failures, adjust your behavior, try again and again until you achieve your goal. Well, guess what? You simply cannot achieve that dream and you simply have to give up on it. Unfortunately, a lot of us, we do that from time to time. We just say, ah, I'm, I'm just done. I'm going to just forget about it. But that is not how life works. If you really want to get this thing done, if you want to achieve your dream, as Olga said, you're going to have to focus on trying to fail, be okay with it, learn from it and try again. That's very good, Olga. I'm going to move on now to Ilya here. So Ilya, what is your perspective? What do you think we could do to turn that dream into a reality? Uh, okay. First of all, I think you need to focus. It's the main. Uh, you need to think uh, what do you need to do uh, to get your goal and uh and about oh, uh, of course you can lose but you don't need to think about it because uh in boxing i i don't remember who that uh, who said it but uh thing is that uh, do not think about uh that you fell think about what you would do after you get up mm -hmm. wow. so my my position is that so you need to do something it's a uh, it's a uh, all your, all your, <laughs> I don't know, um, all your dreams come true when yeah. you work hard. I have, Interesting. I have an addition to his motto and to the quote. That's right. Um, the number of uh, times uh, that you fall do not matter. The, no uh, the number of times uh, when you raised after that, that is what matters. Fantastic. <laughs> I you think see, it's a similar wow. quote. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, I think it's a quote by some boxer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So you believe, Eli, that it doesn't matter how many times you fall. All that matters is how many times you get up and keep going. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't agree more. That's so true. That's so true. And But there's a tendency when we fail – that's what we do, unfortunately. Like, we start looking for excuses. Oh, it's because of this. Oh, maybe it's not my dream or passion. No. If you know your dream, then if you fail, please know that you will have feeling like quitting. All right. I just want to quit. You simply cannot allow yourself to quit all the time. Now, there are times where you have to quit. Again, I'm not, you know, a fan of like, you should never quit. Because that means banging your head against the same wall. Maybe sometimes you really think you have a talent that you don't. I remember I posted a video a while back. It was a long time before, so it was in the French language, where I said that there are three elements that are important. 
and your talents. Number one, you discover the talent. Number two, you hear other people's feedback. Because if you really are talented in something, the chances are someone's going to tell you about it at some point, right? If you really are good on the dance floor, you probably are going to get some compliments. But if the only compliment you've ever gotten for dancing was from your mommy, then maybe despite your biggest talent and ambition towards becoming the world's number one dancer, maybe you should consider a different career, right? So the second element is what kind of compliments you've received throughout your life. Because if you have a very specific star-like talent in any field, the chances are people will notice that at some point they're going to give you a compliment. And of course, the last part of that, after you know what it is and you receive the feedbacks, is to ask yourself, how can I actually use this to gain uh, basically recognition, to make money, to make a living doing this thing? And when you put it all together, of course, you will have a great chance. So... So far, we've talked about a lot of these great uh, techniques for dreams. And in the last part of the show, I want to actually talk about what action steps we're going to take and more importantly, how we can inspire this culture of goal setting and goal achieving among other people. Because I really believe that if we live in a world where people have goals, we are not going to be witnessing so many of the things that we're currently witnessing, like people wasting their entire life on social media, just fooling around, doing nothing. So Pujik's... Here's my last question to you, and I'm going to ask, of course, our guests as well. How can we promote the culture of goal setting and goal achieving around us in a world distracted by bings and jings and all the other goddamn stuff that are happening on our phones and around us? How can we promote that culture of goal setting and goal achieving? Well, I think it's already sort of being done (laughs) in, in one way or the other. We just have to, like, I think the most important thing people need to understand is this the idea of essentially prioritizing there's so many good stuff out there and we have to understand not all of them can be done like you can you can say i want to watch this tv show yeah that's great but you can't watch all tv shows <laughs> and if i if you watch tv shows you're not going to do that if you if you, if you if you watch tv shows you're not going to watch movies if you watch movies you're not going to and these are just fun stuff now there are different stuff that you do for for i don't know for, for again achieving your goals and again not all of those things are equal either you can, if you're, you know, let's say your goal today is to earn this amount of money, there's so many ways you can earn that amount of money. So I think um, understanding that and prioritizing is very important. And um, it, this has to be, this has to be, uh, well, now you say how the culture, I mean, that's one of the reasons we're doing this podcast is to uh, talk about different ideas um, and, and, and promote them. And, uh, and there's so many good people out there. And well, personally, honestly, I'm not a, uh, um, I, I think social media has uh, played negative parts in our lives, to be honest with you, but it also has uh, played positive uh, uh, stuff. It, like, uh, it had positive imp- impacts in our lives. And, and um, personally, I really enjoy following a lot of very positive prior, uh, priority setting people like yourself on, on social media to pleasure. remind myself because we're, we're, we're creatures that we keep forgetting things that are super important. So we need to be reminded over and over again. That's exactly what we want, and uh, and and these programs, social media, podcasts, movies, uh, friends who can remind you, Absolutely. surround yourself exactly. with good people, good people that can always motivate you, uh, and remind you that what you're doing and what your goals were, uh, push you, nudge you towards the direction that you have to go, not the one that you want to go necessarily. Want want to? I mean, in the short term sense, I want to watch this movie, kind of kind of wanna. So, so yeah, those are the good things that you can. You can promote around your own self and create that culture around yourself, and that will spread. I'm, I'm sure of it because whatever works, it will. People will notice it. Fantastic, great point. Now, Olga, let's move on to you. How can we promote this culture of goal setting and goal achieving? Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, Pujik said uh, uh, just the same thing that I wanted to say. So I just uh, cannot say better than he did because I agree totally with it. We can surround ourselves. We can make a um, very fruitful environment. We can surround ourselves uh, with people who uh, also want to achieve the goals and to um, to do something bigger in this life mm-hmm. rather than watching uh, serious and uh, um, surfing on the internet. Uh, also, yeah, as Pujik said, um, different podcasts, uh, movies. Uh, also, I think um, as if we talk about teenagers, right? So basically, uh, the teenagers are the people. Uh, is the, the 
um, adolescent um, period is when a person starts uh, asking this question, right? So it's very important to uh, promote goal setting among particular, in particular, this group, right, teenagers. That's right. And uh, for for them, um, the um, the people that they uh, listen to are actually usually the influencers, right? That's right. So it's very important that. Um, we have a lot of influencers, a lot of popular people who really um, propag- like they don't um, create propaganda, but um, um, but at oh, least they yeah, propagate their own positive agendas, agenda right? Health. They can actually help others to. They can propagate their ideas to uh, in a world yeah, yeah. dominated so by they negativity. They can actually send good message. Ideas. Yeah, so we need to have a lot of uh, famous people, uh, a lot of uh, people who um, have a lot of subscribers, I don't know, who create YouTube channels, and they should uh, propagate uh, healthy ideas, healthy way of living, goal setting, achieving your goals. So that is fantastic. Great point. And Ilya, what is your perspective? How to promote the culture of goal setting and goal achieving in our modern day and age? Uh, yeah, it's a very interesting question, but uh, I can say that we have a very, uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, tools and instruments like mm-hmm. Instagram, Twitter, and all things we can um, tell in that place. So I think, yeah. That's wonderful. So you are promoting usage of social media. Yeah, yeah, it's a very... You yourself, um, Ilya, right now, uh, what do you use these platforms for? I mean, the people you follow on social media, for example, generally you yourself, do you tend to use Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or other social media for, uh, you know, somehow finding these type of messages and information? Or maybe that's not always what you yourself do. Uh... I don't know. He's motivated without anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Interesting. Because th- that's the whole point. I mean, we have certain stars like Gary V who are uh, basically, uh, who has a lot of, you know, basically uh, followers and who is helping the young generation to think more like an entrepreneur. And that's wonderful. But for every Gary V, there are tons of, let's say, rappers or whoever who are promoting smoking, smoking pot and, I don't know, just living a shitty life. So ultimately, you're right. The key here is to get more more and more people to somehow ascribe to the idea and to promote it among their friends. But don't just wait for influencers. You yourself can influence your friends, your your parents, your your children, uh, your loved ones. We always can. I mean, tomorrow, I'm, actually, I'm about to post uh, basically uh, in the books and nutshell of my website about the book, uh, basically, Contagious and how ideas catch on. And of course, by the time this show is uh, basically uh, published, uh, this article is already uh, on my website. And there it is discussed that word of mouth actually is more effective than what the influencers say on social media and typical classic traditional marketing. So you don't necessarily have to wait for an influencer to, you know, put that stuff on the internet or wherever it is. You can actually yourself become a source of positivity. You can actually tell your best friends, tell your classmates, tell your, for example, uh, family members to start thinking big, setting goals. And by little changes, if every single one of us just told one or two, basically, friends about the importance of goal setting, I think the whole world would have changed overnight, basically, right? Because we know a lot of people, and by just merely changing a few people, that culture eventually will spread out. So don't wait. Do not do not try to delegate the responsibility of promoting this culture to influencers on social media or, I don't know, celebrities or politicians, because that's going to take you a long time and you probably won't get there. So take personal responsibility and share that with your own friends, family members, loved ones, because that might not necessarily influence millions uh, with one post. But it does change the lives of a few people, and that's all that matters anyways, right? So uh, that's all the time we have for I want to thank uh, all, all of our guests here. But before we go for the end of the show, let's now wrap up the conversation. So, Pujix, after all that we talked today, what is now your final thought about the show? I think we've said everything, but I want to th- uh, thank Julia and Olga. Uh, they've been such good sport. We've uh, we've had difficulties finding time, and we... Um, uh, so so thank you thank you for uh, joining us today and thank you for being patient with our uh, scheduling it was awesome thank you for inviting us that's right that's very well of course pleasure. it's an honor to have you Olga as well as Ilya so you yourself Olga after all that we talked what is now your final comment as well as conclusion for the show uh, I actually understood that you guys are really doing a very important job right <laughs> so you are the guys who are actually promoting uh, these healthy thoughts 
uh, healthy ideas of uh, um, following your dream and setting goals. So, um, yeah, actually, I think that um, it's a very important thing to have a dream and to discuss with your friends, um, to try to spread these ideas among uh, the people who you love and um, uh, the people from your surrounding in general. So, yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And Ilya, what is your final comment? Um, thank you for all that. It was really amazing and really, really cool. And this is uh, motivated for uh, for the future. So motivation for the future. Yeah, motivation amazing. for the future. So wow, uh, it helped uh, really. Um, it really helped to me. So <laughs> it's wonderful. And once again, I would like to thank uh, you, Olga, as well as Elia, for your uh, basically great ideas. And as always, I would like to thank uh, the producer of the show, Pujix, for all of his contributions and arranging the whole point. And that's all the time you heard all of us talk. And now you, the listeners, it is now your turn to somehow use what you've just learned and apply it to your life. Yes, we're trying to be a, you know, a source of a positive motivation for you. Yes, we want the whole culture of goal setting and goal achievement to become a priority in life. But ultimately, it all depends on you. It all depends on your actions. And we really hope at the Beyond the Present podcast that after having this as a show, you now have the motivation to start dreaming big and to start to shoot for the stars and achieve your goals. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have for, and this was Beyond the Present Podcast. My name is Daniel Mulgan. Please make sure to check us out on our website as well as on social media. Wish you guys the best. Bye.